Today, we are going to discuss the earth signs. Cardinal earth. Earth has three. Again, I tell you, you know, I try to do it so serious, but I'm, I'm like shining like a light because of all this makeup. Anyway, um, we are going to discuss the three earth signs. Well, actually, the modality of earth. Virgo, mutable earth, Taurus, fixed earth, and Capricorn. Cardinal Earth. Understand what that means. Cardinal Earth is representing the North. The North, the upper northern portion of our planet. While the opposite of that is the polar regions of our planet, of the Earth. The north points towards the apex of a five-pointed star. Okay? A five-pointed star, which is the star of Capricorn, the devil. The portion, the top, is north. This is north. Okay? That's east of the pentagram. And that's west. And all this is south. Earth is north. Fire. It's east. Water. I mean, air. It's west. Let's try it again. Because <laughs> everything I just said is completely untrue. We have the east, which is air. Cardinal air. Libra. Then we have the West, which is water. Then you have the South, which is fire. And then you have the North, which is earth. And then the circle that surrounds the four elements is considered the ether. So there's actually five elements, fire and the South, Air in the east, water in the west, and earth in the north, and then the circle which encompasses all these four elements into what is our current solid, watery, fiery, and airy earth. The ground is earth. The water, the seas is water. The fire is the molten core of our planet that keeps the earth in fusion and keeps it in a globe. And air represents our atmosphere, both above and below. And that right there is the creation of our planet through the forging together of these four elements by the spirit, which we call the ether. This is Capricorn. Capricorn represents earth and earthly experiences. We have to understand that we are humans, okay? We are humans having, well, actually, we are souls having human experiences. We are spirit having human experiences. So Capricorn represents a platform in which material matter will reign supreme. 
and only material matter, that which can be seen, touched, smell, taste, only that of matter that can pass the five senses here will be held as valid and real. If you can't taste it, if you can't smell it, if you can't see it, if you can't touch it, and if you can't hear it, then it's not real. It doesn't belong in this plane of existence. Capricorn represents the devil. In the tarot key, Alistair Crowley deck, the weight deck, the writer deck, whatever deck you use, there's always a devil card in the tarot deck. The devil represents material matter. The trees, the rocks, the oceans, the rivers, you know, the animals, the birds, the insects, you know, everything that is engrossed in matter, including humans, all of this falls on the Capricorn, cardinal earth. Understand why it is considered cardinal. Because there are many, many souls, including those of animals, those of plants, those of minerals, there are many souls, human, non-human, extraterrestrial alike, nature, spirit, you name it, even those of other star systems, are dying to enter this type of experience of matter, which is completely dense, vibrates at a low frequency, and offers us very little pleasure, but much pain. A woman has to labor in childbirth for her to be born to experience all of this. And then we have to go through the sting of death when it finally comes for all of us. So there's nothing really pleasant about being on this plane. This plane is hard. When you enter Earth and when we are born, we are born in Capricorn. Cardinal Earth. It is here that the soul leaves from whatever planet or solar system or star system you are reincarnating from. And then you come down here to the highway of the Kabbalah, the tree of life. Because that is a highway to get here. There are many Kabbalahs. There are many trees of life. Our particular one is the one that is defined by the Kabbalists. Malkuth is the end result or the final destination of the highway into material matter. And then when we want to leave, we go right back to God to the same highway in which we descended. That's really Jacob's ladder. Ah, I just revealed the mystery there. So cardinal earth is the door, is the dweller in the threshold that decides now you are to enter earth life or now you are to leave earth life capricorn represents the grim reaper raphael the one that comes with a sickle to break the silver cord which binds your spirit to material matter and once that cord is broken like it claims in ecclesiastes in our bible then the dust returns to earth, and the spirit returns to God, whom gave it. So understand the cardinality of Capricorn. In Capricorn, you will experience both hell on earth and heaven on earth. And it's not something that you have to experience at a single lifetime. It is something that you could experience in multiple lifetimes. If you're born a Capricorn, you are here to do some serious stuff. You're not here to joke around. 
You're here to play around. And I have to discuss this as an astrologer. Because remember, without astrologers, there are no signs of the zodiac. Because we're the only ones that can interpret them, right? Okay, so let's make that clear. So we know Capricorn inside and out. All four types and 12 subtypes. And each one is born for a particular purpose. But he has to go through a particular journey. And the woman that's going to be with him will have to sacrifice everything she has. Even what she doesn't have. To make the Capricorn man great. Because he's not going to accomplish it on his own. Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. Saturn is a planet that has its own moons. It has its rings. It, it, it has its own system. Saturn and its moons and rings can exist on its own. It's like a miniature solar system within a solar system. And I have to take time to explain this to you. Because if you're already getting the, 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 the benefit of the sun, and you got a very bright moon and a couple of other moons, and you it's like you are it's like mother and father with her children. And she's not dependent on anything else but that of the sun which she gets. Then what the hell do I need to participate with the rest of the planets in my own solar system when I got mine and I'm good? Saturn, if you look at it and study it, has its own kind of like miniature uh, solar system, star system. That is a form of self-containment. It doesn't need the other planets. It functions on its own with its own functional unit that it created for itself. So too is the psychology of the Capricorn man. The Capricorn man feels that he needs nobody. That he got it. He's good. He don't need anything and no one. That he can be old man winter, old grumpy winter. Saturn is very far out in space. So it's much colder out there than it is in Mars or Jupiter or Venus or Mercury. Saturn is the gateway to the outer planets, right? Like Neptune, Uranus, and Pluto, the asteroid belt, the Oort cloud, and beyond. And yet, before you get to those outer planets where it's much colder, much more mysterious out in space, Saturn represents that last door between physical known life and that of the unknown. That's why it is the gatekeeper of life and death. It is the grim reaper, the dweller in the threshold. He decides how long you will live. When you go to a reader and they, and they read your lifeline, all of this is determined by Saturn before you're born. So he already knows how long you're going to be in this life. How long you will be rich or poor, when, if you're going to marry, if you will, if you're going to have children. How you will die. Will you die old age? Will you die gracefully? Will you be murdered? What will happen to you? Saturn rules all of that. That's why it is considered in the occult philosophy, the devil. And, you know, we hear all kinds of um, catchphrases concerning the devil. The devil never sleeps in his house is one catchphrase. Or 
you know, if you're going to dance with the devil, you better pay the piper. So the devil knows everything. He was around Lucifer. He was there when they created us. Watch him. Knowing our weaknesses and our strengths. And knowing the angels and the different orders that created us. Like he says in the Bible. Let us make man after our image. After our likeness. That's in Genesis. It lets you know that we were created by these beings. It lets you know that. The devil. Capricorn. Which has a higher symbol esoterically than the one that I'm presenting to you. Symbolizes that energy that was always there from the very beginning. Watching, learning, observing, and also interfering and infiltrating, infiltrating, and absorbing and creating and molding and influencing. So Capricorn as a cardinal sign means that it is driven by ambition, determination, desire, and has a psychological need for greatness. But also understand that Capricorn comes in four major types and four major subtypes. You have the devil. And this one is ruthless in business. Then you have number two, the playboy, the decan of Virgo. Number three, the financier. The financier. And then, the fourth one will be the strategist. The strategist. All four of them will act the same way, but for different reasons and motivations. And each one will have a game plan. The devil is the one that looks like how I'm dressed. My $1,500 scarf from Turkey, along with my $800 jacket. You can see this, it's money. One ring, and that's too much. A Rolex, one ring, nothing else. Simple is better for Mr. Capricorn. And this man is shrewd in business. This type of man is called the dictator. And he shows no mercy in love or in business. Then you have number two, which is the playboy. This one cannot keep it in his pants. The the can of Virgo. Oh yeah, he's very sexy. And these are the types of Capricorn men that you see in porno movies. Right? LL Cool J is a Capricorn with a Virgo decan, which is why he's so sexy and flaunts it. That's not Capricorn. Capricorn is very conservative, very low key. So he is not that type of Virgo, that type of Capricorn. He follows the Virgo decan, the player. And all of his music, if you go to his early music, you're going to feel and hear the Virgo, the hustler, the chaster, the player. That's the Virgo the kind of Capricorn, the one that women go crazy for. Like Nelly, up, 
oh, 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 remember Nelly? You know, who has kind of like a very sexy, sly, kind of wicked kind of uh, uh, aura to his music and videos. That's also the Virgo they can. It makes this man kind of wicked, but in a sexy way. You know, Mercury's influence in Capricorn. That's the can. This is the playboy. He has a fantastic body. Loves to show it. Loves to flaunt it. And if he can make money out of it, even better. He loves to flaunt it on women and use it as a weapon to get women into bed and then get into their pocketbook. He's a lot of fun. <laughs> He's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. But this type of Capricorn will never commit to you. Life is a game. Again, pulling from the Mercury, Gemini uh, aspect of Virgo, because it's ruled by Mercury. Remember, these are Mercury's children. And the decan of Capricorn is Capricorn, the first week, the second week to the middle of the second week is Virgo, and then the last decan is Taurus. So, and then you have another Capricorn four, which is completely separate and different. Okay, and these marks the decan of the sign. So the Playboy is functioning in the Virgo decan, and this one is a liar. He's a manipulator. He's unreliable. He doesn't commit, and he's a user. A user and a ruthless user breaks many hearts leaves a trail of destruction especially when they're young they tend to get a little better when they get older the devil is the goat and this one is governed by the decan of the greed of greed this Capricorn is greedy Wait, do you watch American greed well, he's that type of Capricorn. And they don't got to be Capricorns to exude the Capricorn archetype. Because that is just more money, more the better. Greed. Because it's one of the vices of Capricorn. It's greed. But the greed doesn't have to be translated in just money. It can be greed emotionally. Where he doesn't share himself to his partner. Where he doesn't share his inner life with the person that he's with. He may demand you to share you with him. But he will not open and share himself with you. So then it's an open door policy. Or a one way door policy. And these are the more narcissistic types. But that can speak to a more traumatic experience in his own life. Usually the goat, the devil, the one born in the early degrees of Capricorn, which is a double the can, are the ones that usually go to the shit, like Mr. Scorpio. These men are self-made men. Remember, the goat or the devil, which is the first one, is also the sign of the elite. The elite. This Capricorn wears like $1,500 fedoras, the, the Rolex says, just is very simply, because when you're that wealthy, you don't got to flaunt it. And that's the elite, the goat, the devil. And his agenda is not to look good or to flaunt money because he needs your validation or approval. No, you're dealing with the wrong Capricorn. This one has other interests and has his mind on a higher globe level that doesn't even concern you. This one can be kind of cruel in a very sophisticated way. Then you have number three, which is the financier. This one likes to make people dependent upon him. This one likes to have something of every single body in his pocket so that he can cash in later so he have a favor from you or want a favor from you. He's that type of financier. He's into harvesting people so that he can use them later towards his own means and devices. Well, remember that, that is in situation I got you out of? I, I was the only one that helped you. Don't you feel that you owe me? That's the third type of Capricorn. The, the, the Taurus, the can. The hoarder. 
And there are many Capricorns that are hoarders. Oh, we're finished here. I'm so sorry.